All right, welcome to Junk Planning then. Okay, so um, as part of today's Junko planning, we actually combined the IBIS demo. Um, and so what you'll see is we'll be doing demos for the first part of this planning session. We'll go over the goals of the planning session. Uh, Thomas will give an overview of the roadmap for the next few releases. Um, we'll go over the Junko schedule and uh, the timing of the various sprints, and then get into uh, discussions on what the various folks are contributing to this release. Can... Yep. So here are the various IBIS demos. Uh, the first one will be Luca demoing uh, the work that the Deployment Brigade uh, has been working on. And then Satoshi uh, will be going over the dynamic configuration uh, demo. And then Jian Li will be going over Lisp. All right. Yeah. So I can hand it over to Luca, right? Yes. Show my screen. Let's see. Let's see my screen. Okay, All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, so this demo is uh, uh, about uh, VPLS, which is uh, uh, one of the main things we uh, focus on in the last release as deployment brigade. Uh, at least one of the main significant to the external audience, I guess. Um, so, very briefly, for those of you that uh, hear about VPLS for the first time, it's just one very quick slide. Uh, it's an, an honest application to create multi-point broadcast layer 2 networks, uh, both through UIs and programmatically. Uh, it can connect, basically, uh, multiple endpoints in a network, uh, where hosts are connecting, are connected, and send in packets using the same VLAN, different VLANs, or no VLANs at all. Uh, we have additional features, which are uh, encapsulation. So the packet for transport can be encapsulated through the core uh, in, uh, and with MPLS labels and with a second VLAN tag. We have a CLI, REST APIs, Java APIs, and of course a distributed configuration, which is given by uh, the Honest Network configuration itself. Uh, what's new in this release? Uh, mainly three things, uh, which are the encapsulation support, as I said, VLAN and MPLS, support for physical, or as you call them, access or uh, untagged ports, and we have a new CLI, which basically uh, allows you to run all the commands using basically one command, but I guess it will be more clear when you will see it in a second. Uh, I don't know what's going on with my topology, but let me show it to you all. Okay, here it is. Um, <coughs> okay, so uh, very easy. Uh, we have six switches, number from one to six, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. For each switch, we have a corresponding host from one to six, okay. Switches one to four have hosts sending in packets using different VLANs. So host 1, VLAN 100, host 2, 200, and so on. Finally, host 5 and 6 on the, on the left and on the right are sending in packets without using any VLAN. So let's move to the console. Let me make it bigger on one side and on the other side. Hopefully, you should all see that. Uh, so. The only thing I've done already, uh, just in the interest of time, but it's very easy to do. It's one command, actually. Uh, it's creating interfaces, OK? Uh, I call the interfaces just as the hosts are called. Uh, this means, basically, just that we say to Onos to intercept packets on a certain physical port using, eventually, a VLAN or without using any VLAN. Uh, and I also activated uh, VPLS, okay? Uh, you can see it here in the list of applications. Right now, the VPLS configuration is totally empty. There are no VPLSs configured. Um, just to show you, this is the topology we're running. So exactly the same topology I showed you before on the slides, okay? So the four hosts at the center 
uh, that make the square, sending in packets using different VLANs, and the one on the left and the right that are sending in packets without any VLAN tag. Okay, so all I need to do uh, to activate my first BPLS is to run the command uh, uh, BPLS create. Uh, I give a name to my BPLS. Uh, I can say with lots of fantasy BPLS one. Okay, so now I have my BPLS, but it's empty, right? Uh, by the way, on the other side, I have Mininet, right? Uh, so what I would try to do is to let host one ping host two. Of course, the ping doesn't work now because there are no interfaces associated to my BPLS, okay? So what I will, let's let the ping go. Uh, on the other side, uh, let me add an interface to the BPLS I've just created. So I add host one, and then I add host two. As you can see, as soon as I do this, the two hosts start to ping together. I can do the same also for other hosts, right? So for example, I ping host three, ping it doesn't go through, I add host three, and now the ping goes through, right? Um, as I said, from this release, I can do this also for hosts that don't send in packets using uh, a VLAN. So for example, host five, is not using VLANs, but we can anyway add it to our VPLS and do the VLAN translation also in this case. Finally, uh, last case, of course, uh, maybe it's the most trivial case, uh, but we can ping between two hosts, of course, that are not using VLANs at all. Um, so let's let the ping go, and let me ask to add also host six. As you see, once again, as soon as I add it, that works. So let's take a look at the VPLS I've just created. As you can see, I have now a VPLS called VPLS1 with uh, five inter interfaces associated. This generated, of course, uh, let me make just, let me make the window a little bit bigger. So this generated, of course, a number of intents, different intents. Uh, 22 in this case. Uh, the only thing I want to show you is that, well, this I guess is confusing, um, but basically there's no, probably with the intent is going to be better. Um, so, okay, let me put encapsulation first. Okay, so if I do BPLS show, okay, no encapsulation is set. Uh, now I can say BPLS set encapsulation uh, BPLS one VLAN. And if I do again BPLS show, encapsulation is set. And my flows, uh, let me see if I find it, uh, but. Uh, Pierre, you are quicker than me in this thing to find tags, but um, you should see basically another VLAN uh, push in the packet uh, somewhere. A VLAN that I didn't allocate it. So anyway, it's difficult to see here, uh, but as an encapsulation type, uh, you have VLAN. Okay. Same thing I can do it with MPLS. Okay, here is. For example, for this intent, now I have uh, for this MPLS, I have um, encapsulation type equal VLAN, equal MPLS. Okay. Uh, just to finish the demo, let's destroy, of course, our network. Uh, please note that on the right side, in the meantime, uh, I'm sorry you didn't notice it before, but once I, while I was changing encapsulation, uh, we didn't have any packet drop. Um, so now I'll just do two things. I remove a couple of hosts, uh, sorry, a couple of interfaces. So from VPLS1, I start to say remove host 6. As you see, the ping stops on the right. Uh, I'll do it 
also with a NOS with a VLAN, so you can see it. Uh, I pin NOS 2, so remove interface host 2. It takes just, yeah, not even one second to stop it. Okay? Finally, let's destroy our network. So delete UPLS1, and no hosts can talk anymore to one each other. So if I do also host 3, nothing works anymore. Okay? And no DPLS are configured. That's it. I left you just uh, references, just because the presentation will be recorded. Sorry. Um, at the at the end of the presentation. So if you want to know more, you can just go to these links and learn more about it. Yeah. Thank you. Very cool. Thanks, Luca. So let me make you maybe present it again, I guess. Um, change presenter. We can actually make Satoshi. Is that you or? We can make Satoshi. Satoshi, okay. Done. Uh, send. All right. So, no worries. You are the presenter, okay? And now you can just click this, probably. Yes. So, just a little bit at the top today, but we should see soon. Uh, what is the link here? Sorry. There we go. Change. Okay, perfect. Uh, yeah. right. There's just a little bit of delay. Uh, okay. Uh, today I I I want to demonstrate. Uh, <laughs>
I get uh, ONU, uh, ONU that, that's connected with OLP device and, and get ONU information via test con <coughs> set. Also set uh, ONU uh, uh, administrative state via test uh, con interface. And then, Two uh, one netconf device is registered now. Uh, this is a OLP device, and Here, here is uh, my, my application, and uh, this includes uh, virtual OLT devices, young model, and uh, interface is automatically generated uh, by YMS, Young Management System, and now we can uh, access the when you information This this URL uh, is uh, corresponding to uh, young young schema model uh, of OLT device, and uh, by sending get uh, get request uh, to to getting ONU information. We can get uh, this uh, ONU information. Uh, there is two ONUs uh, connected with OLT, so we can see uh, two, uh, two ONUs. And the ne next is uh, 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 
setting uh, we can set uh, some con configuration uh, by post request uh, and in 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 the URL uh, which when you to be uh, set with this part and in this case uh, link uh, link number one uh, and when you number one and uh, request body means uh, uh, how to uh, what is to be set and in this case admin state uh, will be disabled and then send And if we make it what do we need? Okay. Try, try again. configuration I, I can operate a uh, uh, virtual reality device and but uh, still uh, data store function is not implemented and I I will uh, implement I I have to implement and so yes and it's first time to for me to join uh, OSS community, and uh, I feel a difficulty in keeping track. And very very fast changes, and uh, I I have to more study more. Okay, thank you. that's all. Thank okay. you. Thank you. And uh, next. Is uh, Zen? Oh yeah, Thomas. I'm making you a presenter. Yes, thank you. Uh, All right, we can see you. Okay, great. Hello. Yes, we can see you, and we can okay. hear you. 
Okay, okay, I will give a brief demo for Lisp uh, on us. So in this demo, uh, I'm gonna present two demos uh, for today. So the first demo is for virtual machine live migration among different data centers. So this is the topology of um, the data center. So as you can see, we have two Lisp site one and the Lisp site two and the, another Lisp site three. So Lisp site one and two has a all like a virtual machine and hypervisors. So in this demo, we're gonna migrate virtual machine one from Lisp site one to Lisp site two, and during that time, we're gonna um, ping from uh, Lisp site three as a client to this VM and to see the service disruption time. So as a first time, uh, we assume that uh, the, the uh, Lisp site uh, two digits are just connected through the internet. And uh, Lisp site three, the client is uh, periodically ping from Lisp site three to uh, Lisp site one in this VM. And uh, once the virtual machine uh, live migration has been finished, the modified version of WebVirt manager will send the live migration request to LibVirt, and then the uh, migration has been finished. And all at the end of the live migration has been finished, it will send the uh, update map database request to the uh, list router, and then it will update its uh, own database, and then uh, it will also send the uh, list map update request to Onos. Then Onos will send this list map request SMR to corresponding um, routers, and then the routers will ask for the updated map information from the original router, and then the router will. Uh, ultimately send updated message like uh, map mappings so that the mapping information has been changed. So after that, uh, the client will periodically ping from uh, ping to the um, the destined uh, virtual machine. So uh, we try to use uh, this mechanism to realize the um, uh, live migration. And I will first show the uh, real live live migration um, uh, scenario. So this is um. Because uh, it requires a lot of time to um, to set up the entire uh, topology, so we just um, capture all the stuff as a video. So, so as a first time, we need to run the onos. So once the onos is running, uh, we need to make sure that uh, the Lisp provider has been uh, activated. So in the client side, we try to attach the onos into the server. And uh, when you when when we issue the apps uh, list command, we, we we can see that uh, two apps should be activated. One is a uh, list provider, and another one is a uh, uh, list compilation app. And once this has been done, then um, we need to initiate the OR. It's an it's open source uh, list router. So this is for uh, initiate the routers in the uh, server side. Lisp server side, so we activated uh, the Lisp router in each Lisp site, and this is for this router for client side. So now we try to ping from client to server. So this is for trying to confirm that all the connection has been like uh, established. So at the first side, when we try to ping from client to server, since we did not instantiate the server yet, so there will be no uh, ICMP reply. So we in this case, we will activate a server. Okay, so once we activate a server, then there will be a ping reply from the server, and then, and now we try to migrate the server from this site one to this site two. So once we initiate the uh, live migration, we can see that there will be ping reply because it, the migration has not been finished yet because it takes some time to migrate the entire like uh, you know. The VMs because it's to dump all the memory state and to the extension. So, what? So once once we wait a little bit more, then we will see some service just some service disruption time. As you can see, that we we have uh, almost like a four seconds like um, uh, ICMP reply that like a packet loss. So it almost like takes four seconds to uh, migrate the entire like uh, VM. Like uh, you know, change all the paths and so on. And the second demo is for uh, Lisp P. So this demo has been shown in the Onos build. I will briefly just repeat the, the demo. 
So in this demo, we use open list router. So it's an, another open source list router. So the scenario is, is as follows. So at the first time, the, in, uh, the ETR, so which is aggregate tunnel router, will uh, send the two paths to the owners as, as a form of map register. So we have two paths, path one and the path two. And in the path one, we will go through, we will go through the RTR one and uh, so, I, so the packet from ITR uh, will go through the RTR1 and destined to ETR. The second path is uh, from ITR uh, to the R RTR2 and destined to ETR. So once this restriction phase has been finished, all knows the path. So when a packet is sent from client to uh, ITR, since I ITR has no mapping information, so it will ask the uh, owners about the pass, and since owners already know all the passes, then it will reply um, this request as a map reply with uh, along with the uh, TE pass, and then based on this pass, the, the packet can be forwarded to RTR one because we have already the preset of pass, and also RTR two. So th because it's a TE, so all the traffic will be uh, evenly uh, distributed, like uh, separated as a. a Based on the weight value, what we weight, uh, what we specified, since all, all the RTR do not have any mapping information as well, so it will also ask owners to request the pass, and owners will set up the pass, and the the pack will be uh, ultimately uh, forwarded to ETR and sent to the um, designate, designated uh, host. I will show the demo for this. This demo also requires a lot of setup, so we capture this as a video. So. We have, uh, so in this time we have many entities. We have uh, ITR, ETR, and the two RTRs, and the one owner's like, uh, controller. So at the first time, we need to boot up the owner's with the Lisp uh, source one provider enabled. So I will fast forward a little bit. So you boot it up, and uh, you try to connect the owner's client to the server at, in order to activate the Lisp um, the provider first. So, uh, so uh, app application activate, and then we need to type in the uh, Lisp OS project and so on. Okay, then we can confirm that the the Lisp provider is running, and the IP address of the uh, owners is uh, as follows. And then in second step, we need to start ITR. So it's an ingress tunnel router. So we need to query um, how this bad register has been sent to owners first. So we assume that um, this um, like uh, TE pass has been preset up in each uh, routers first, so that uh, when we start up a certain router, it will send such a pass to the owners. So as we can see that um, this is a map register message, and it uh, contains the pass information, including the RTR1 and the RTR2 as well. And the one, so once we send, then the, the router will receive the map notify from owners in this case. Uh, we also can do the similar stuff to ETR. So ETR also has its own like uh, mappings. So once we instantiate it, it will show the um, the ED prefix and our uh, pass one, the pass two, and so on. So it also received the man notify from owners in this time. So and the next step, we can instantiate the RTR. It's a re it's a re re encapsulated tunnel router. So because uh, at the first Time it has no like mapping information, so even if we uh, try to tell the log, there will be nothing to show. So we just show something like uh, the uh, initialization message. We also can do the similar stuff to RTR2 as well. So the similar. So now what we can do is um, we can try to query the map uh, cache and the map database information. So as you can see, this is all only we only have a map uh, local map database. Uh, information. There's no map cache country has been set it up because uh, map cache is only been uh, set it up when we uh, start to uh, query the uh, the owners. Okay, so 
we we now we are trying to ping from the uh, uh, ITR to ETR in this case, and uh, so ping has, has been uh, successfully uh, get reply, and now we need to see what happened in each router. So if we can if we go to ITR and uh, type in the uh, tail, then it should show the map request and map reply message correctly. So as you can see. Now we re we received uh, we sent the map request to the owners and we got the map reply from the owners with the corresponding like uh, passes in this case. Uh, we also can query the same stuff in to the ETR. Uh, oh, before that we need to uh, need to see how this map cache has been updated. So as you can see that uh, so this is the map database and we have uh, now map cache and in this map cache. As you can see that uh, since we are running this TE, so all the like the traffic has been divided in 50 percent. We also can do this similar stuff to ETR, and uh, I will just fast forward. So same same stuff, like uh, same same thing as just has been happened to ETR as well. And for RTR, if we try to query the map database, uh, as you can see, it has a map cache has been updated as well, just for patches. The similar stuff has been also been done for RTR2 as well. So uh, you can see that the map, database, uh, map cache has been updated for RTR2 as well uh, as two entries. So that's it. So this is um, OK. Uh, the last thing is we need to check what happens in the data plane. So we try to keep dump all the like packets that's been received, from, received uh, have been sent from ITR. So as you can see, um, in this case, because ITR will send the packet to RTR1 and RTR2 at the same time. So as you can see that the ITR is sending the message to RTR1 and 2 as well. So similar stuff will happen to ETR. So ETR is supposed to receive message from both RTR1 and RTR2. So once we uh, try to see the result, then ETR will receive this packet from RTR1 and 2 and so on. So, so this TE has been successfully implemented, and uh, this is the demo for today's release. Uh, the same, the session. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. No, no, no. Jen. <laughs> uh, there you go. You can. Uh, Okay, and you can uh, you can see my screen, right? Yep. All right, good. So I think we can uh, actually right on time. We can probably move on to the overall goals uh, for this uh, for the next I guess next part of the meeting, right? So we're done with the demos, and now we're gonna go over these these sections. I'll let you um, summarize this one. Is that right? Okay. So uh, the goal of me this meeting is to go over the uh, development plans for the Junko and K releases. So Junko is targeted to be released in the uh, end of February time frame, and the K release is going to be the end of May time frame. Uh, the goal for this meeting is for us to understand what's going to be delivered, what the dependencies are between the projects of any uh, and this way we're all aligned on what is going to be delivered. Um, Thomas, roadmap? Okay. So this is uh, just a picture of the next year, um, or I guess next uh, nine months, uh, sort of at a glance. For, um, and that includes Junko and the K and L releases, which are yet to be named. So uh, the, the primary thrust uh, through actually most of the releases will be on dynamic configuration, virtualization, and uh, UI scalability. And uh, you can see in here that uh, the, these uh, major themes will go through different um, sort of different phases as we're trying to uh, um, incubate them and um, and develop the, the different functionalities. Uh, specifically for Junko, the the for the dynamic configuration, the idea will be to first develop the compiler and runtime, 
and distributed store and a couple of different protocol applications for ESCON, NetConf, and then later on they will introduce sharding of the trees and transactions and optimizations. Uh, for a virtualization, um, the idea here is to primarily implement the first uh, provider which is based on OpenFlow and provide an OpenFlow agent. Um, and uh, later on, we will add snapshotting, network embedding, and ad additional southbound. For UI, uh, for Junko, the idea is to, um, to finalize the implementations of regions and layouts, and a new dark uh, re-implement the dark theme, and then uh, later on move on to implementing the global search as a feature. So this is this is sort of a cross section of the different uh, themes. Now, of course, there will be this is um, this is the sort of the core of the release, but there will be additional features uh, um, which, which we expect that will be uh, provided by our, our various contributors, uh, but which are not necessarily portrayed in here. So, um, so let's focus our attention now onto the Janko uh, schedule. So this Janko schedule is going to occur as a set of four sprints. Uh, the first sprints will start next week on Monday on December 12th and will go through to about two weeks ending on Thursday, December 22nd. Um, and then after the holiday break, we'll start the second sprint and that'll last for three weeks. After that, we'll have the third sprint, which is the point where we'll have feature and integration complete. So that's the milestone where we need to make sure that all functionality is integrated so that we can get a Junko uh, RC and released out. We're targeting uh, February 28th for that release. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and I think with that we can probably turn our attention onto the various um, uh, sort of various uh, um, the brigades and, and uh, topics of development. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, got, uh, I guess at this point you, you know quite well the deployment brigade. We talk about this many times, but uh, we, uh, we left in each slide uh, some references for people that hear about that for the first time. Um, as you understood from the previous demo, um, we are focusing lots of, we focus our attention a lot on layer two services, especially the VPLS application. Uh, the goal in general is to create the stack, uh, uh, a stack that can be easily deployed and maintained in production slash pre-production, at least by a research network and hopefully service provider. Uh, so we are always looking for new inputs. These are the ones we recently had. Um, the new VPLS CLI, I would say that we were lucky enough to to have it merged by in this release. Uh, so I guess that's done. Uh, but for sure, we will work on encapsulation in SDN IP. Uh, so same features you, you saw before, we will do it. We will make it happen also for uh, SDN IP. Uh, bandwidth support, uh, including meters, in the Intel framework and in the resource subsystem. Uh, this is a very delicate work that needs lots of reviews is already in progress, but uh, I guess it will happen by next release. Um, once we have that, we will be able to enable bandwidth uh, uh, reservation and enforcement into VPLS, meaning that you will be able to create point-to-point -point or multi-point network enforcing uh, bandwidth. Uh, and also, what I what we wish to see there, at least as a proof of concept, uh, would be the integration between SDNIP, VPLS, and Bucket Optical. So we start to have a more complete uh, stack, uh, the three layers working uh, together. There's lots of work to do with that. That's why we put for now POC. Let's see how it goes. Thank you. All right. Thanks. <coughs> OK. Um, since Ali is not here, I'm going to let uh, so would you mind representing the virtualization brigade? Okay, so in the morning session, we, I briefly mentioned about the, our planning for Junko release. Uh, in this case, we 
now we, our team is uh, working on uh, consists of eight members, and we are working on this uh, in three sub modules. One is the uh, open flow agent, which is patient their external SDN controllers to support as a northbound interface, and then we also process all requests and uh, request the process to external controller with support neither um, core services. And uh, lastly, we also are doing the, the interfacing, the physical network to virtual network. So we also developing southbound interfaces. So this is what we do, what we are doing now. So for Junko deliverable, we expect that we can uh, deliver open flow agent as a northbound interface for our virtualization system. And we will also complete the core service and provide the service to supporting this uh, open flow agent. So we expect that we can support the external uh, SDN or open flow controllers by uh, and owners working as a proxy uh, virtualization hypervisor, network hypervisor. And for k religious, we will a little bit ambitious, but we will provide more uh, useful uh, functions such as external connectivities and also support the virtual network snapshotting and embedding more advanced embedding and more uh, generalized the structure for network uh, virtual network structure. And also we plan to implement the open state integration and some additional features. Now we targeting only for open flow, but the, after that we were also planning to extend not only open flow, we also uh, provide more southbound protocols and also we cover the resilience features. Uh, this is our plan for JEN, Junco, and K release for owners. That's it. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, Hi, Thomas. Hi. Yeah, I'm online. Hi. Thank you, Thomas. Hi. Um, so the, uh, the for the dynamic configurations, uh, the we're running this uh, pro project that is uh, open. So the, all the information is uh, posted on the uh, wiki. Here is a link, the team members and uh, the contact information and the weekly meeting uh, uh, information. All these are uh, captured by the uh, brigade. We also open uh, uh, tables to capture your requirement. If you have any uh, requirement to us and uh, just go there, I put the sample over there. You can uh, follow that ones. Okay, so the goals uh, is the first one is the you know in the I I release we um, we we have achieved the the development the goals for the YMS is the Yan management the system and the Yan tools. So the in uh, this release because of uh, we uh, and there there are still the other applications like ACTN. Uh, has the dependencies and uh, use the YMS. We are waiting for the the ACTN uh, leaders. Uh, I want it's uh, 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 see if uh, they have uh, more uh, uh, requirement to us for the YMS or not. Okay. So so the overall the goals and uh, uh, it's pretty much aligned with what the Thomas uh, uh, talked about in the beginning. Um, it's uh, all the all this uh, development work is uh, spread into the YAN tools, the YAN runtimes uh, protocol, include the NetConf and the uh, RESConf. All these are uh, in reflect to the new uh, architecture refactoring. Okay, so demo applications. So the first of all, I would like uh, con congratulations to the Satosh um, from the Fujitsu. So just give us the demo for the demo one. That is a part of the, uh, uh, that one was based on the YMS, all the architectures. So the Satosh, uh, I'm going to talk to you and your teams offline and, and, uh, and uh, see um, uh, how to migrate, when to start to migrate from the old YMS um, architecture to the new architecture. We are going to set up the, the, the schedules about that. So the second one is uh, layer, layer three, layer three VPN. So the, yeah, so the, here is the two demos. So the required about the 
J radius and the K radius is all the pretty much is uh, is aligned with the Thomas uh, talked about in the beginning. I I don't have much to see. The one thing I really need to uh, catch you, you guys' attention is uh, we need the more uh, resource because of the netconf and the restconf uh, has some changes. I I really hope the guys uh, with this uh, background so can join us and help us to uh, to do this restconf app and uh, netconf uh, app. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Hi, yes. Yeah. So um, the GUI brigade in the Junker release is basically going to continue on the region aware topology view for uh, drilling into um, regions providing a hierarchical view of your network. Uh, one of the major parts of this will be to reinstate the overlay mechanism, um, which is where uh, applications can inject additional behavior to the topology view. Uh, we ha have another of, uh, a number of other uh, items that we wish to also tackle. Um, one is to um, provide a more structured rendering of um, intents. For example, the, the treatments um, and the constraints are currently just um, rendered as, as strings, which are very hard for a, a user to uh, internalize. So, so we want to make that a little more readable. Um, we're also going to, um, so the um, ONOS cluster will partition its, its data, and we thought it would be um, interesting to actually visualize that in the UI. Um, so we have a design document where we want to kind of um, figure out how we want to visualize it, and then actually um, implement that in the following release. Um, so the, uh, in earlier versions of the UI, we had both a light and dark theme. When we went through the, um, the process of re-theming uh, with the help of the graphic designer, uh, just to simplify things, we dropped the dark theme. Well, um, it turns out that we're going to re-implement that uh, because it, it's very useful for uh, demos in particular. Um, <coughs> also, although it's under the GUI brigade, the index global <coughs> subsystem, um, what we're planning to do here is basically uh, running in the background on the server is um, index items that are in the model. So you might be able to search for um, devices by serial number, manufacturer, or, or whatever. Um, but this backend subsystem will be available through the GUI, the CLUI, and, and REST for you to be able to provide a filtered view of um, items that match a search, um, a search tag. So that how we're going to design it and how we're going to put it together will be investigated during the Junker release and hopefully then um, implemented during the following release. All right. There you go. Okay. Thanks. Well, it could, um, be, it could the, be a morale. Okay. The yeah. advantage yeah. is yeah. that Thomas and I did this for HP. Oh, okay. So we've done it before. Yeah. We just have to remember what we did <laughs> and uh, come up with a better, faster design. So the act of localization will be handled entirely um, by the community managers. I'm just thinking about like you know, my, my least favorite feature of the Macintosh is that that whole stale attempt at, at indexing. I mean, Windows has the same problem where, where the system just periodically grinds to a halt because it's decided it wants to index everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's quite why I'm thinking of thinking of yeah. Well, I've suffered through. Sherlock, and then I'm suffering through Spotlight, and I'm suffering through Windows system. Like all those things are just terrible, terrible things that I wish I could just take a look at. I'm always cautious when somebody suggests that adding such a system to someone else would be a good idea. Well, I think it'll be yeah, a very, very lightweight. Yeah, yeah, make it as lightweight and operative. as possible. And operative. And, uh, definitely definitely in more ways than one. It's definitely something that can't interfere with sort of the quote unquote real time nature. Yeah. All right. So for Junko release for QA, majority of the focus will be testing the brigade features and the, the functional features as coverage, and we will be enhancing some of the existing uh, but, um, features like the intents and HA uh, tests as well. 
and mostly we'll be focusing on the deployment and virtualization if there is any if there are like any new test coverage uh, and uh, for the dynamic configuration brigade we would be collaborating with the existing test members in the dynamic configuration brigade and we had earlier uh, some coverage of VPLS um, test cases in uh, IGIS release and we continue in uh, in the Junko release as well. And uh, regarding the security test, uh, there had been some issues in the past. So we are uh, in the Junko release, we plan to investigate and then come up with a plan how to cover as part of these uh, security test uh, areas. And uh, our actual uh, focus on integration of all these test, uh, security tests and uh, enhancing this security test will be uh, in the K release. And for the performance, we continue with the collaboration with BIA, Verizon, and Huawei. And uh, for uh, uh, Junko release, we are planning to uh, run all the performance test cases and enhance some of the performances uh, test cases as well. Uh, um, and then we are planning to uh, update the performance white paper as far, part of K-release. And uh, there are some other miscellaneous enhancements in the next slide. Uh, and there are some miscellaneous enhancements that we are planning, uh, which are like internal to uh, QA and uh, mostly from the automation framework side. Uh, we are planning to change the way we were doing some of the tests and uh, enhance some of the uh, framework itself. And uh, another plan is we are planning to include the uh, OpenFlow 1.3 and 1.5 features um, as part of Junko and K release. Great. So that's it. Thank you. Back at optical sound. There you are. Okay. So, so we are basically sample and CSQ style, which requires protection and so on. So this, these are the items we are going to be working on. So quick protection behavior is abstraction that device itself makes a decision. Between the primary and backup path, that's the one that we are building. And I think it's a very good intent where the, there's going to be a multiple layer of, of intent to realize the end to end connection. <coughs> there's one intent in optical layer, there's another intent in packet layer. So we need to be able to coordinate those kind of this intent relies on this another intent. So we will, so at the end, we'd like to be able to do the group of analysis for the other way around, impact analysis. If this thing breaks, what is going to break? Those kind of things. We would like to enable that. We would like to start integrating integrating that for the jump already. Great. Thanks, Yuta. All right. Jian, you're back on. Yes. Yeah. So I will be, um, provide the, the proposal for Junko release and the K release. So as a Junko uh, deliverables, I uh, we plan to propose four items. So by far, we implemented the protocol layers of this SBI, but we'll continuously um, uh, move move forward to, pro to provide um, the provider layers to implement device provider as well as uh, message provider. We will further enhance the map server and the map resolver. So by far, we are supporting seven uh, control message types handling. We will support more this message type in the future. Uh, we will also continuously work on preserving the semantics of each uh, black field to define any control message that this supports. With current implementation, once the list router is failed, then it takes a large amount of time to recover from such a service disruption. So to overcome such an uh, issue, we plan to provide a fast router recovery scheme by using the Brook uh, mapping information updates mechanism. We will also provide a way to distribute mapping information across the uh, multiple controller. Uh, and for K uh, release, we plan to support delegated database tree, so it's a DDT, so with which we can further enhance the controller control scalability. Uh, and now Onos is supporting two list router, uh, which are OR and open list, but they provide a different like interfaces to manage it. So uh, to resolve such an issue, we would like to provide a common way to manage OR and open list. And if this part has been done, we can pro uh, we can provide a way to program the list mapping information in a, in a, uh, in a common way. And uh, finally, we'll continuously prepare more demos to provide uh, some interesting uh, showcases using this uh, SPI. That's it. Uh, thank you. All right. Thanks. And a 
CCTN, so Iowa. Uh, yes. Hi, Thomas. Hi. Hey, guys. Um, so I think I missed the morning session uh, because of other meetings, so I'm adding this here. Um, so for uh, ACTN, uh, in the past uh, uh, HNI release, we have uh, 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 submitted uh, functionalities for um, traffic engineering topology and uh, tunnel uh, management function uh, with respect to the support for IETF-based uh, models. And uh, in the uh, J release, uh, what we plan to do is to uh, continue to uh, to continue the model enhancement uh, to support T, um, what we have submitted uh, for the T topology and T tunnel, and also uh, in this process we need to do uh, continuous integration with YMS. Uh, we have uh, done a great uh, deal with YMS in the last couple of weeks. Uh, fixed quite some bugs uh, because of the um, <coughs> progressing. Um, changes in both YMS and uh, on RESConf on our end. So um, the, uh, the, we'll, we'll be doing some uh, more integration and bug fixes uh, in the uh, J-releases. Uh, and also um, there is a, a GUI that we uh, 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 prepared to s support uh, multi-T uh, topology uh, display and also to uh, do tunnel management, and we are looking to uh, contribute to this part into uh, into Onos either either as a um, separate application or uh, uh, find ways to uh, get integrated with the Onos uh, GUI. Um, but but um, that needs to be uh, discussed. Uh, and also, uh, in addition to that, there is a um, <coughs> path computation generic path computation function over the uh, abstract T topology that we created for the uh, uh, for the uh, using the T topology model um, that uh, needs to be there uh, and also uh, in the last release and before we have uh, started uh, uh, proposing some uh, extensions uh, for the uh, annotation uh, mechanism uh, to allow us to support uh, composite uh, TE uh, objects uh, attributes uh, in uh, subsystems like T link device and tunnel. Um, so uh, we are we are <coughs> looking to um, uh, settle this and contribute uh, uh, the uh, extensions to uh, to the uh, subsystem so that that allows us to uh, store uh, TE attributes eventually in the in the core subsystem. Uh, this is uh, th these are some uh, items for the uh, J releases. Uh, for the K uh, deliverable, what we want to put in is uh, the uh, <coughs> topology abstraction for the from the domain controller perspective, and also tunnel mapping for domain controller. And uh, with respect to the uh, uh, tunnel management, uh, today we only support end-to-end uh, -end unprotected tunnels and uh, we want to introduce the support for tunnel protection uh, in the uh, care release. Yeah, that's that's all from my end. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, and I think that's the, I think that's the last category. So, um, Ian, do you want to wrap up? Okay, so just a reminder that Junko Sprint 1 will start next Monday uh, on December 12th. Uh, sprint planning should be on the ONOS calendar uh, at 3 p.m. PST. Uh, during this week, the plan is to focus on QA of the RC4 release so that we can get a final release out for IBIS. Um, there is a bug scrub scheduled for tomorrow, um, so uh, please attend. And then, the, since we're doing sprint planning next Monday, <clears throat> please go through JIRA and uh, scrub your epics and stories in preparation for that planning session. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Um, I think that concludes the uh, Junko release planning. And um, let's have a good release and a uh, good set of demos for ONS. All right. I'm going to stop recording.